<laughs> we're gonna He's do a very good morning as well. We're gonna do a quick stream before we uh, before we swap over. Um, something happened yesterday that I think is a very important point. And uh, she did a stream about it, but it really didn't. It really didn't cover the point that needed to be said and covered. So I didn't upload that video. You want to share the story? Yeah, well, I, I did the stream yesterday um, and then we got talking and then we realized there's a whole lot more to really cover on that. And um, I was in the, the little ladies room uh, yesterday and um, I'm just in the stall and I'm in and out real fast, but there was a lady next to me and um, you know, they're on their phone, each to their own, I, 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 but anyways, and the, the, the conversation went kind of blah, 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 and then it was like, I hate my life. Welcome to my life. I, I mean, it was like loathsome. I hate, hate my life. And, and I just was like, that's so sad. That is just so sad. And, um, and that, it, it spurned a conversation yeah. between us because I know her story. I know that since she's been 16 years old, even before that, she's at 16, she went overseas. She began serving in, in Asia and she was gone for what, 25 years? Uh, 20 something years. 20 yeah. something years. Yeah, yeah. At 10,000 feet, no hot and cold running water. No, and I just. No um, heat and air conditioning. No, you know, was it sometimes a little bit rough? Sure, but I, I thrived on things like that. And it's not that even, I've had ups and downs. I mean, you know my story. I, I've well, had, some people don't. Some people don't. Well, you know, my We'll cover more of this Yeah, weekend. yeah, but you know. I lost, I lost my whole family members, um, I lost my home, I lost everything. In a matter of seven months? In a matter of just, yes. Six, seven yeah. months? Yeah. And, and the majority of that was like overnight, you know, um, within a week almost. Um, and yet I've never, I don't think I've ever said, ever, even in the lowest and the darkest places of my life, I've never said I hate my life, you know. Has, it have, has there been places where it's been difficult? Yes, and maybe even dev and definitely devastating, but I've never said I, at that time, I hate my life, or my life sucks. Well, and the reason I wanted to do a stream about this, because with my background and all the things I've done that were successful, all the things I've done that weren't successful, all the ups and downs, all the, you know, growing up in that, in that environment, my mother said something two weeks ago to me when I was talking to her that broke my heart, because uh, she's now 82. She said, I should have called the cops with all everything that was happening with me, her, my brother, my sister growing up. She said, I should have called the cops. What a horrible thing for a mother to say, looking back on her life with her three kids and what happened to us. What a horrible thing. But in all the things I've survived and all the things I've done that I've, you know, I've succeeded wildly beyond my dreams in a lot of areas. I have never, even at my lowest of my lows. Now, have I tried to, have I tried to find some solutions at the bottom of a bottle sometimes? Yeah, yeah. But I have never looked at anybody at any point in my life and said, my life sucks. Welcome to my life. I have never, ever, and I'll tell you guys this from the, the successes I've had in being around, being myself, a, you know, six figure guy, being myself a millionaire. We're, we're on our way right back to that. She's a six-figure girl now. She's going to be a seven-figure girl in about another uh, year and a half, max. I have never, ever let anybody be around me that that came out of their mouth. Didn't have any interest. If you're going to if you're gonna boo-hoo your own life and you're going to speak that those words that my life sucks, I don't want you in my life at any capacity because you're a loser. You're gonna lose. When it's a it's that victim mentality, you know, and then e even in that, you know, that that dark place that person is, and there there are the victim. At the end of the day, it's still trying to get the attention, um, and and it's just it's not healthy. It's just toxic to have people like that around you. And when I was thinking about this stream last night, when I was thinking about it. I thought back to survival school when I began flying in the Air Force after I got my commission. And in survival school up in Washington, which is where we run out of sometimes with Amazon, up at McCord Air Force Base, there was land navigation you had to do. And we were about a week and a half in, I believe, about a weekend. You're, you're, you're underfed, you're under underwatered, so you're just on the border of being uh, 
um, dehydrated, you're, you're definitely underfed, so you're always hungry. And then you got to do this land navigation and cover, you know, 15, 18 miles. I'm going from memory. I could be, it could be further than that or less than that. I don't remember, but you do land navigation and go from point A to point B and get there in a certain time period and be ready. And the girl that was with me, I was an officer. She was enlisted. And I said, you know what? We got to, we got to a river and what almost a, a sheer cliff face going up. And I said, we can walk or walk down this river and cross where this looks like we can get up and have a little bit easier time. Or we can go right across this river here and go straight up this mountain and get right there to where we where we can lay down and get some rest because you're all so tired because you're you're underslept. I wonder where she is nowadays because she wasn't bigger than this fine young animal. She was five foot nothing herself. Didn't weigh didn't weigh a penny. And she looked at me. We stood there and looked at this this straight up cliff. It was it wasn't exactly straight up, but it was it was a climb. It was a dangerous climb. I didn't think twice, but I looked at her and said, if we do this, we can get to the, to the waypoint. We can probably get a couple hours sleep and just stop, you know, and get caught up on just rest. I said, but if you don't want to do it, we'll go the other way. She's like, I don't even think she took 20 seconds. She's like, let's go, let's do it. And it was looking back, like she put a lot of confidence in me to say, we can do this. People that don't see the upside in things, people that want to wallow in their own pity, people that want to tell you how bad their, bad their life is, I have never found success with those people. And when I've let them into my life, it's always been a mistake. Always, 100%. Because people want you to feel what they're feeling. And if you're feeling that your life sucks and you're a loser and you're losing and there's no way out and it's dark and dank and everything else, I probably can't help you anyway because most of those people have issues that I can't, I'm not trained to help. All I know is in everything I've had coming up, all the chaos, enough chaos where my mother actually said to me, after 61 years of my life, 82 years of her life, I should have called the police. Even after all that crap, I've never went, man, my life sucks. It's never come out of my mouth. <clears throat> and the more I succeeded, and the more I was around people that were succeeding, the less that mindset is even close to being something you speak out of your mouth. So I wanted to talk about that because like with her, now that I've gotten to know her, I've, I've, we talked about a, a lot of her stories, which we'll share on the members only yeah. side. You have all the reason in the world to be broken hearted broken down yeah alcoholic popping pills yeah yeah i mean even uh just briefly like i mean people some people know my story some people don't but part of that life crunch crisis um my husband was killed overnight in a car accident just like it happened one day i said i was one day was he was around <coughs> the next day we were making plans for the weekend the next day he's gone and um you know we had a, ni a nice like collection of uh, a couple of whiskey bottles from that we've collected from around the world and you know I could have gone straight to them didn't touch them you know I could have done something else I, I didn't I, I took a step back even in that worst place I thought okay how can I not be a victim because the thing that scared me the most was becoming the victim and having that dictate my life and I, I couldn't even look at that path and I couldn't even walk down that road she, she told me when she got in the truck she couldn't even imagine telling people she was a widow because she said that word to her yes. sounded like she was trying to find sympathy from people. That's a very, very powerful thing to say. She had every reason in the world. She is a widow, but she said just speaking the word to her, and you summarize some of this, but it just made you feel like you were trying to victimize and you had like you lost your dog, you lost there, and you lost your house. Yeah. You know, had to move real quick. Well, I mean, the, ch the choice to move out of my apartment within the same week. So within the same week of losing my husband, the dog, like four months prior to that, I had a the, the contract for another year came up. I'd lost seventy percent of my income, and I could have sat there and become the victim and just signed it and hoped it was COVID. So everyone was paying something somewhere, and I could have done. I couldn't do it. I didn't want to be the victim. And then the 
there, there was authorities that I had to deal with, you know, with death and um, bank accounts and whatever it is with paperwork. And I would skirt around, and uh, my friend said, it's, "It's okay. You can use the word widow. That's what who. That's what's happened." It's technically correct. When you say that you're a widow, it means I just lost my husband. And I'm like, "Ah, yeah, but that word means something. I can't use it. I just cannot." Because it, what it represented was going down that road, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So the purpose of this stream, all this economic chaos, it's already started. They said the credit card debt right now in the U.S. is up 20% just in a month. 20% across the nation, credit card debt. People are using their credit card to pay their bills. People are already starting to panic. They're only a month into this. Really a little bit further into that, but the, the last month, the credit card debt's gone through the roof 20%. It's going to keep on magnifying. There are going to be so many people. I got witness to my own words right now. There's going to be so many people in this economic crash that's already happening that your what you speak and who you're around is going to dictate more of how you get through this than anything. Anything. And you need to... Man, you need to fight. You need to fight from within. You can't speak those kind of words like my life sucks. You know, welcome to my to my trauma. No. No. You can get through what whatever's happening to you is happening for a reason. And you can get through whatever's put in front of you. Those are my two tenets of life. Whatever's happening to me is happening for a reason. So I need to find the I need to find the lesson. And I can get through whatever's put in front of me. That's how I've always lived my life, and that was—that's a paraphrase. Even though it's a—it's a—it's a biblical principle. It's what I—it's what I had to do because nobody was coming to save me. Mommy wasn't going to come and save me. She was in the middle of it, trying to protect herself. I had to learn to think past what I was in the middle of and find Plan A, Plan B, Plan C, and keep moving forward. And it served me well. Like I, I, I wouldn't wish my first 14 years of my life on anybody, but man, it, it toughened me up, and it took all my excuses away, took all the bitch out of me. Pardon my language. <laughs> so I wanted to do that because that, like, what she, what this girl in this next stall said, yeah, she could have just been dramatic, could have been having a bad day, blah blah blah. Well, a bad day turns into a bad week, turns into a bad month, turns into you start losing all the time because you're speaking that crap out of your heart it just, it just had so much conviction in it you know and i could hear just then the story you know, blah, 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 blah. as she's going out she just was wanting to spill it all out to whatever and it just was it was the conviction that i heard i was like oh it was the conviction that i heard and i just was like ah oh, no you know like wow that's a sad situation so we got to roll because we're starting to we're starting to swap over. It's got about another thousand miles to get to the east coast before we turn around and head straight back west coast. And then and then we are on vacation. Well, not quite. <laughs> well, we're no, doing, no, not quite. We're, we're gonna do oh. one quick load to get over towards where we're taking vacation. Then we're taking ten days off and doing some great breaking. Some <laughs> great breaking, baby. Red and the hurricane. Love travel adventure. We are Bominos.